If someone were to come to you that knows nothing about Christianity, someone were to say, tell me what it means in plain English. What does the birth of Jesus have to do with my life in 2021? You know, when you look at the pandemic, when you look at all of the maladies that we see in human existence, what does it mean to me today? What would you be able to tell them? My Lord, that, he's my strength. God's always with me. When I pray, my prayer will be heard. I'm not forsaken. I always have hope. It doesn't matter what comes my way. Oh, hallelujah. There's always someone with me. It doesn't matter what happens tomorrow. I'm protected. I'm sheltered. But you know what? God is more than just my shelter and my refuge. He's also my fortress and my strength. So he's not just a defensive God. He's going to put me on the offensive so that I can be everything that God wants me to be, regardless of what comes my way. It means I have victory. I will win when all is said and done. Because Jesus is with me, I have won. How many people, that's what you believe? That's in your heart. And that's in your spirit. Throughout this week, even as I was looking at what Christmas means to me this year, you know, this phrase kept coming in my heart. And it's a phrase where the Lord was saying, I am giving you another chance. Just think about what that means. So many people, they need another chance right now. When you look at the year they had, all the difficult times, they, can we have a real Christmas message here? And they say, when you look at my finances, when you look at my job, when you look at my marriage, when you look at my family, when you look at everything that I wanted to do, it seems like everything is crumbling and falling down. And sometimes things can get so settled, so fallen down, that we say, you know what, man, I, I need to just reduce my expectations. Let me take my jacket off in here. I, I want to talk to somebody in here today. I'm going to talk to somebody. Thank you. Sometimes people say, yeah, I'm going to church, man, and yeah, I'm doing this and that, but you know what? My life is just not what I wanted it to be. When I think about where I wanted to be at this point in my life and all the things that I wanted to do, I just don't see it. I don't see that hope. I don't see that opportunity. So let me just do what I, the best that I can to get by, to have peace and, and make it another day. And sometimes in life, we can tailor our expectations to the pain and the failures that we see. But what I feel like the Lord is saying today is he's saying, no, do not do that. Because when I sent my son Jesus, when I came to a virgin Mary, and when I went inside that stable, I came to give humanity another chance. I hope somebody's hearing me right now. That means I have another chance. You have another chance. The person next to you has another chance, regardless of what you're going through in your life. So I want you to say this with me. Just say, we have another chance. Go ahead and say that. Say, another chance is possible right now. Go ahead and say that. Now I want you to give the Lord a shout of praise for that right now. Because that's what Christmas and the greatest gift given to humanity was all about. And I'm going to show you just a few of these chances. And I'm going to look with you. I want you to look with me to this scripture that comes from the book of Luke. Chapter 1, verses 11 to 13. It says, but the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zacharias. This is a passage written about a man named Zacharias. He was like a high priest. He was a high priest. Kind of like a, a big-time bishop or an apostle or a senior pastor. And he says, don't be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard. I want you to say with me, God hears our prayers. Go ahead and say that. Say with me, I should not be afraid. Oh, my Lord because God hears my prayers. One more time, I will not be afraid because God hears my prayers. When you pray, God's listening and God hears. And what he tells Zacharias is because in the midst of your prayer, I don't want you to be afraid and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son and you shall call his name John. Now this isn't the passage about Jesus. This is a passage about Jesus' cousin. John. 
And the story behind Elizabeth and Zacharias is in the verses before this. It says that they were of advanced age. What does advanced age mean, somebody? I mean, no, it means old. It doesn't mean old. It means wise. Yeah, that's it. It means uh, they're at the, the years and season of wisdom. Let's call it that. You know, you have young and you have wise. That's how I'm going out, all right? And, and, and what you have here is you have two people, and the verses before it, they said that this woman had a lot of reproach. She wanted a child all her life. And when a woman in those days was barren, she had a reproach. Well, she can't have children. You know, you know something's wrong with her. And she had that stigma on her that something was wrong while her husband was a high priest serving the Lord, praising the Lord, serving the people of God, doing all the functions that people should do. Just people, righteous people. How many righteous people do we have in here? Just go ahead and make some noise in here. If you love the Lord, serve the Lord, you love being in his house, being in the company of believers. Well, get, you know, is it possible that sometimes those of us that serve the Lord and have been doing so dutifully and faithfully, we still have longings in our heart? Do I have any righteous people in here where you're saying, I've been praying for something for a while. Go ahead and talk to me. In here. Yeah, I've been going, you know, how long, Lord? And, and, and it says in this particular passage, a high priest, he is like the top dog. The person who represents the people, you know, in before God, goes into the Holy of Holies praying on their behalf. It says he has this longing in his heart. And so what he does is he's praying to the Lord, but he's not praying for a son. He's offering the prayers on behalf of all the other people, on behalf of the saints, the people that are coming in the outer courts. You see, sometimes we may have a pain in our heart, and God's still saying, but I want you to serve anyway. Oh, someone didn't hear. Let me say that again slower. Sometimes there's something we want individually in our personal lives, and the Lord will still say, in the midst of that hole, in the midst of that sorrow, I still want you to be a difference for somebody else. You see, sometimes we go off in our own way and we say things like, you know what, if, you know, I, I'll be able to serve the Lord when things get worked out in my own life. When you see this story about Zacharias, he was doing all the functions of a high priest even though he had this burden of prayer. And it says, now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. Actually, let me read, I skipped a verse. But the angel said, do not be afraid. Let me go right back. But the angel said to him, do not be afraid, for your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. I want you to write down this phrase. God's given you another chance for what you've been longing for. You see, what happened after this particular passage is that Zacharias, at first he didn't believe. The angel told him right when he went into the Holy of Holies, he's praying for other people, and the angel says, even though you're praying for others, God hears your prayer. And as you are praying, God is answering the hole in your own life. He's answering the burden that you and your wife have been longing for. You will conceive, even in your years of wisdom, you shall have a child, and this child's name shall be John. And he gives one of the greatest passages. He's going to have the spirit of Elijah. He's going to be testifying of the Lord Jesus Christ, even as Christ is coming onto the scene. I want to share this with someone. If you've been waiting for something for a long time, what today means is that God hears your prayers. Uh, you didn't get it. If you've been serving for a long time, still with a vacancy and a void in your life, and you're serving and serving, you're wondering, will it ever be? This day means that God will send an angel to say, God has heard your prayer, and the Holy Spirit is at work, and right now you will give birth to what you've been longing for if you believe that you have another chance that's available to you and possible for you. You just have to say, yes, Lord, continue to pray, continue to serve. I see you, my Lord, my Lord. And right now, you know, in my life, I thank the Lord for how many times the Lord has given me a second chance. Oh, Jesus. Anyway, any witnesses of that in here? Where you thought something was completely over, you've already given up on it, already just moved beyond it, but the Lord's saying, no, it's not over. I'm going to give you another chance, my Lord. Just go ahead and thank the Lord right now for that. Tell the person next to you, you've got another chance. Go ahead and say that. Say, it's not over. The Lord's got you. Go ahead and tell them that. I'm going to talk to someone else here. 
This is a scripture that comes out of the book of Matthew. It says, now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, and she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name what? Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Every time you see that, you should thank the Lord and give God some praise for what Jesus does. He will save his people from their sins. I want you just to thank the Lord nice and loud for me. Can you do that? If, you, if, this, if this resonates in your heart, I'm going to save humanity. The conception of the Holy Spirit, pathway made possible to the eternal Father. All of your sins and your mistakes can't hold you back. Jesus is going to save you. This is a great day. It's an angelic experience. But when you really read through this passage and you go through all the undertones, it didn't feel like that to Joseph. It says that Joseph was a just man. Someone say with me, a just man. It means he was a good man. He did what he's supposed to do. He honored the Lord. He was faithful in all the Lord's commandments. But what it says earlier in these passages, it says that when he found out that the woman he was betrothed to, which means more than an engagement, it was actually like a part of the marriage, he finds out she's with child. And it says that what he does is since he finds out that his bride is with child, in his day, that was something that was punishable. And so what they would do is they had all different kinds of punishments. So what he did is he said, well, I've got to protect her, but I've got to do what's right. So I am going to put her away privately. You see, there was a public way you could put your wife away due to the laws of Moses. You could take her in front of the magistrates. They could take her to the outside of the camp with the people that did the offenses. And then she could have been publicly scorned and humiliated. So what Joseph said is, I don't want to do that, but this marriage can't proceed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give her a private certificate of divorce so that no one will be able to publicly scorn her, but that this problem will be solved. But in the midst of all that, the Holy Spirit comes in and he tells him in a dream, don't do any of those things because what's inside her is of the Holy Spirit. I hope somebody's hearing me this morning. Why is that important? Joseph, if you would have been Joseph at that time, at his stage, in his society, with all his conventions, there was no room for what the Lord was doing. It said that something's wrong, but yet the Lord did not observe all of those societal conventions. God said, I'm going to do this my way. I hope somebody's hearing me right now. And so Joseph, before, someone say with me, before, go ahead and say that. Before the Lord could talk to him and speak to him, he had already had his decision made. Oh, my Lord. You could preach a message on that. This is what happened. These are the events as they are. I'm just and I'm righteous. I already know what the solution is. I know how to end this. And then God speaks to him. Sometimes we make decisions based upon our just knowledge, all that we know before God even speaks to us. I hope someone's hearing me. But what the Lord did is the Lord spoke to him, and because of the man he was, he says, I've got to change my ideas, change my thoughts. I've got to change my attitudes. I've got to change my actions so that I can receive what God wants me to receive. I hope someone's hearing me right now. This story, this passage, I think is so germane because it's talking about a relationship that got another chance. We're on our way to one case of putting someone away, but no more. We're not going to put her away. We're going to accept her and receive her based upon what God told me to do. I hope someone's hearing me right now. Sometimes we make a lot of decisions when the Lord is saying, give me another chance to speak to you. I hope someone's hearing me right now. Give me another chance to inspire you. Give me another chance to show you my plans, to show you my ways, so that you can receive the best of all that I have for you. Why is that important? I'm going to invite you today to look at every relationship you have. I had a word, of, a prophetic word for someone today. If you feel like it's time to call it, give God another chance. 
If you feel like you've got all the decisions and all the solutions made, seek God. Ask the Lord what he wants you to do. And that's what the Lord will do through your life, through your experience, through your relationships. Do I have any witnesses of that in here right now? My Lord. God can turn it around. God can make what decision that you thought was the right decision and say, no, that's not what I want you to do. I've got another plan and another way. And what you'll see in this passage is because Joseph was a just man and he allowed the Lord to speak into his life, he realized, you know what, the ideas that I had, they needed to get upgraded. They needed to be updated the same way your app needs to be updated on your phone for it to work right. My spirit needed to be updated by the word of the Lord so that I could treat this situation properly and rightfully and create the right environment for the birth of our Savior. Just say with me, Lord, I'm willing to be used by you. Go ahead and say that this morning. Now, I want you to give the Lord a praise for that this morning. Go ahead and praise the Lord. I know that's tough to hear sometimes. I'm going to show you one more chance. This comes out of the Gospel of John. It says, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. This was a passage that the, the apostle John wrote. And the neat thing about the book of John is this gospel was written after all the other gospels are written, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Some, almost, some believe almost 30 years later. I was watching a, an individual and as a scholar, and he says that the reason why John probably wrote his scripture is he said, let me make sure you get everything that Jesus did. And he wrote these particular passages to fill in some of the gaps that some of the other synoptic gospels had missed. And one of the things he wanted to capture was know who Jesus is and know what his entrance into the world means for you. Just say with me, God has something for you. Go ahead and say that right now. Now I want you to put your hand over your heart and say, God has something for me, my Lord. And what this particular passage that John says is he says, as, to as many as received him, if you received Jesus, I want you to give the Lord a shout of praise. Go ahead and say that. That's right, you've got to talk to Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done. It says, to them, you're one of the them, he gave the right. Say with me, I have rights. Now, I want you to say, have you, has someone ever done something to you and they acted like you didn't have any rights? I have so many different illustrations, but I won't say any of them. Where you said, oh, you know, you ever gone to a store and someone said, oh, you don't belong here? And you said, oh, yes, I do. You know, I remember once I was with, well, I shouldn't do this. I'm going to put her on blast anyway. I was with one of my sisters. Uh, her name was Alice, but I won't say it. Uh, when we were young kids, and my sister Alice, she was one of those young ladies that when she was 11, she looked like she was 21. And, and, and she, she had the mind of an adult when I was still playing with cars and trucks. And... And I remember one time we went into a restaurant, and the lady who was working at the door, she looked at us, and she said, oh. And then she said, let me show you our menu. And she took the menu, and she said, you see all these items? These are the prices of the items. And I was like, oh, okay. You know. And my sister got mad. She said, oh, we can pay. I, I, the whole thing slipped over my head. You know? it, it was the lady's way of saying, you don't belong here. It's too expensive for you. And I was just like, well, let's go in. And my sister was so offended. And let's just say she, she represented us very well. And I'll just say that. You know, and, and she always had a keen sense of knowing her rights and when knowing someone was infringing on your rights. She, she could read. Some of y'all are looking at me like, I'm, you know, I don't know what you're talking about, Aubrey. And some people, they can smell it a mile off. Excuse me, what did you mean by that? I know my rights. I know who I am. This is America. This is 2000. That's a 1987 is what you'd say. I know who I am. You can't do that with me. Well, you know, those are rights. And let me tell you, the only way you'll be free is if you know your rights, oh, Jesus, and you're willing to enforce them. Oh, Lord. If someone gives you rights, but you don't know your rights, and you're not willing to keep people accountable to those rights, you will never enjoy the freedom of having those rights. So part of the rights is knowing what's been extended, knowing that you have them, and using them in the times that they're necessary. Oh, Lord, I hope someone's hearing me.
But when you look at this passage, what John says, to as many as received Jesus, to them he gave the right. You have rights. I hope someone's hearing me right now. I'm talking about kingdom of God, spiritual rights that you have to know about, that you have to exercise so you enjoy the freedoms of being a child of God. I hope someone's hearing me right now. That word right that John was talking about, this is what today means for you. As he says, to them he have the rights to be called the sons of God, children of God. And that word child there is the actual word that was written in the original manuscript was sons because in that society, sons had a lot of built-in rights. And John wanted you to know that when you're a child of God, you have a lot of built-in rights because of who your father is. I hope someone hears me right now. Just say with me, I have rights. Hallelujah. Say, devil, I know my rights. Go ahead and say that right now. And I'm going to use them. Go ahead and say that nice and loud. And I want you to give the Lord a shout of praise for that. I have spiritual rights, spiritual freedoms, and for the rest of my life, I'm going to enjoy the freedom that God has given me, my Lord. And he says, to them, many has received them, he gave the right. That word right, it means the legal right. It means right by name. But it also means the right by nature. I want you to hear me on that. You see, a child who's adopted has rights of a guardian. I can grow up in your house. I have all the same rights because I've been adopted. But that adopted child doesn't look like you, right? It's a different set of genes. You know, they have the right of calling you mom and dad and all the freedoms of being one of your children, but there's still an experiential separation that they don't look like you or resemble you or sound like you, the same way your biological child would. So what John was saying is here is we have rights by name, but we also have the right to become by nature. It is so powerful that now that I have the right to be called the child of God, God didn't just say you're going to be adopted. He said, now I'm going to put my life inside you so that you can become through your experience that which you have the right to be. So that now you won't just be like someone on the outskirts saying, well, God is my legal guardian. You'll begin to look like me, sound like me, think like me, sense like me, speak things into being like me, intercede like me, do acts of faith like me, because you are now my child through experience in the same way you are my child by right. So when Jesus came into the world, what he was saying is, I want to give you the legal right to become like God, and I want you to give the genealogical and the biological right to be like your father. You will be like him more because I'm coming into your life, my Lord. I want today, when you look at your life, to say, because Jesus came to me, it doesn't matter what I'm praying for, what I'm longing for, it can be answered. It can be fulfilled today. I want you to look at the people around you and say, you know what, I need to consult the Lord with all these relationships because even if in my mind I think I should call something, the Lord may be saying, I'm giving this another chance. And if he's saying, I'm giving this another chance, I've got to be with the Lord. And I want you also to be just like that gospel, John, where you walk out of this place and you say, you know what, I've got rights. I am going to speak to my world speak to my situation, speak to my problems, speak to my challenges, like someone who just got downloaded a kingdom constitution in which I can say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down by green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for the Lord my God is with me. I want you to walk with those kind of rights. I want you to have the kind of rights where you say, I can walk through this truth because the Lord is my help. The Lord is my strength. God is my comforter. God is my peace. The Lord has made a way possible in my life through any situation. I want you to have that declaration where you say the same way the Lord is with the Israelites in the desert, oh Lord, and he fed them every day, the Lord will be with me in 2022 every single day and provide a shelter over my life, a covering over my life. He sees me, he's walking with me, he's providing with me because the Lord's with me in in all things, my Lord. I want you to experience the peace of God in every relationship that you have and to seize on it and say, the Lord can work this out. Say with me, the Lord is working it out. Go ahead and say that right now. Say, it's only by the Lord he's going to work this out. Go ahead and say that. Say, thank you, Lord, for the relationships in my life. 
Thank you, Lord, for the people you've brought into my life. Teach me, Lord, how to understand them, how to see your will, how to see your way, how to understand your spirit so that I can receive the harvest that you're sending my way. Thank you, Lord. I'm yours. Let it be unto me according to your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to give the Lord a shout of praise this morning, my Lord. Oh, can you stand with me right now to your feet, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord. You see, sometimes we can gather on these days and we can get ready to celebrate the holiday. I want you to walk out of here today with the power of what it means. It's the power that tells you this message that God is giving you another chance today. Oh, Jesus. Let me say it again. God is giving you another chance today. Some of us, we've got to change our minds. And we've got to think, well, if God's given me another chance, pastor just told me it's not over with. The problem that I have, there's still a reconciliation happening. God has a resolution. I can't throw in the towel. I can't give up. You know, when you look at the passages before this, the birth of Christ, it says it was a dark time in the world. It says there was no widespread prophecy. It says there was no widespread prophecy. It looked like the devil had won. Hear me on it. It looked like it. But right at the bleakest moment of human history, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, the greatest miracle of humanity came forth. My Lord, if you would have tried to finish the story of humanity the day before Christ came, it wouldn't have looked good. But the day after, you'd say God made a complete turnaround with the birth of one child. I'm telling you today, it doesn't matter how bleak it looks. Oh, Jesus. God can turn it around in one instant, in one work, with one movement, my Lord. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. So you've got to trust me on this. God is a God who gives second chances, my Lord. The birth of Christ means I'm going to give you another chance, my Lord. And if God's given you another chance... It means you have the greatest opportunity in front of you. Do you receive that this morning, church? Can you give the Lord a shout of praise? My Lord, my Lord. Say these words with me. Say, thank you, Lord, for the opportunity, hallelujah, of even knowing you. Thank you, Lord, for another chance, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for the doors that you're allowing me to walk through. Thank you, Lord, for what's coming my way. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for sending me a Savior to fulfill all of my potential. I thank you. I praise you. My best days are ahead of me. It's a new day. It's a new start. I'm just beginning to walk with Jesus. Thank you, Lord. A miracle has happened. And I receive this miracle today. Now give the Lord a shout of praise right now. We worship you. We praise you. We magnify your name. My Lord, my Lord, with every head bowed, every eye closed, if you need a miracle today, you need a brand new start, Lord, we thank you right now that even as we gather here today and we're centered on the birth of your son, we thank you that today, as we focus on that, you are focusing on the need that needs a brand new life, a new restart. Thank you for being the giver of life, the one who can breathe into flesh and it comes alive, the one who can speak a word and then it begins. Thank you for breathing into us, speaking into our lives with the power of your word. Holy Spirit, quicken the life, quicken that experience, make it so in the name of Jesus. Just say with me, I receive in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done for me. Hallelujah. And with every head still bowed, if you're here this morning and you need to give your life to Jesus, you heard of all that we said, and you're saying, you know, Aubrey, but I need to start my life with Christ today. I need to get his name written over me. I'm going to invite you just to repeat this prayer after me. And I'm going to invite everyone just to say it along in the case that there's one person. And this is what the prayer says. Just say, Lord Jesus, 
today. I accept you as my Savior. Jesus, you are the Son of God. Jesus, you are the Lamb of God. I believe that you came from heaven for me. I believe that you died on the cross for me. I believe that you were blameless through your life just for me. So I accept your sacrifice for my life. You are my savior. I will follow you for the rest of my life because you are my Lord. In the name of Jesus, I pray and I say amen. Hallelujah. Now I want you to give the Lord a shout of praise right now for the person who made that prayer. It's the greatest prayer that you can give. You know, I'm going to invite Reverend Andrews to make her way up, but I want to tell you right now, I'm so excited today because in my life, I want you to see me as I am. God has given me so many chances, second chances, third chances, fourth chances, fifth chances. Do I have any other people like that in here? There's some times that I blew it. Anybody here? Transparent moment here. Times I blew it in my career. Times I blew it in my education. Times I blew it even in my walk with the Lord. You know, I thought I was doing everything right. And the Lord said, man, we got to start all over again. I've done all those things. Times where I've made decisions that I thought were right. That I thought, this is what the Lord wants. And the Lord says, well, you, on a scale of one to ten, you hit a two. You missed on eight other marks. And you said, wow, how, how could I have been so dumb? How could I with all that I've done and all the best of training, how could I still, we all go through that. Thanks be to God that he's given me a lot of chances. And that's why I can tell you if he's given me a lot of chances, he will give you a lot of chances. So go easy on yourself, amen? The birth of Christ meant the Lord is saying, I've got you, just keep walking with me. I'm gonna give you another chance, amen, church? Give the Lord a shout of praise this morning, hallelujah.